Today, we are reading The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kamkwamba and Brian Mueller, pictures by Elizabeth Zunan. After the video, stay tuned for reading questions and educational activity ideas for no prep homeschool learning or classroom discussion and writing activities, and visit laurenmartinbooks.com for a free principal service project and other free learning principles and access to my principal and play-based no prep preschool curriculum and K-12 curriculums. Please like, share, and subscribe to Lauren Martin Books for more read-along stories with comprehension questions and empowering, inspiring educational activities. Now let's read The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. In a small village in Malawi, where people had no money for lights, nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart, like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed, and pieces of radios that he'd crack open and wonder, if I can hear the music, then where is the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room. Witch planes passed through the window while ghost dancers twirled around the room as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. At dawn in the fields, William scanned the maze rows for magical beings, then wondered as a truck rumbled past, how does its engine make it go? Pay attention where you throw that hoe, his father shouted. You'll cut off your foot. For all its power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields, turning the maze into dust. Without food, Malawi began to starve. Soon William's father gathered the children and said, From now on, we eat only one meal per day. Make it last. In the evenings, they sat around the lantern and ate their handful, watching hungry people pass like spirits along the roads. Money also disappeared with the rain. Papani, his father said, I am sorry, you will have to drop out of school. Now William stood on the road and watched the lucky students pass, alone with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat. For weeks he sulked under the mango tree until he remembered the library down the road, a gift from the Americans. He found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engines moved those big trucks and how radios pulled their music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine taller than the tallest tree with blades like a fan, a giant pinwheel, something to catch magic. Slowly, he built the sentence, windmills can produce electricity and pump water. He closed his eyes and saw a windmill outside his home, pulling electricity from the breeze and bringing light to the dark valley. He saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground, sending it gushing through the thirsty fields, turning the maize tall and green. Even when farmers' prayers for rain went unanswered, this windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. Magetsi Ampeho, he whispered. I will build electric wind. In the junkyard, Pieces appeared like rusted treasures in the tall grass, a tractor fan, some pipe, and bearings and bolts that required every muscle to remove. Tonga, he shouted to the birds and spiders, holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, This boy's masala, only crazy people play with trash. After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt, a broken bicycle, rusted bottle caps, and plastic pipe, even a small generator that powered a headlight on a bike. For three days, he bolted, banged, and tinkered while chickens squawked and dogs barked, and neighbors shook their heads, saying, What's Masala doing now? His cousin Jeffrey and best friend Gilbert soon appeared. Muli Buanji, they greeted. Can we help with electric wind? Grab your pangas and follow me, he said, and took them into the forest. Together, they swung the sharp blades into the trunks of blue gum trees, then hammered them together to make the tower. Standing atop, William shouted, bring it up. While the boys tugged and heaved, a crowd gathered below and gazed at this strange machine that now leaned and wobbled like a clumsy giraffe. Some giggled, others teased, but William waited for the wind. Like always it came, first a breeze, then a gusting gale. The tower swayed and the blades spun around. With sore hands, once slowed by hunger and darkness, William connected wires to a small bulb, which flickered at first, then surged as bright as the sun. Tonga, he shouted, I have made electric wind. 
Watch it bueno, a man yelled. Well done. As the doubters clapped and cheered, William knew he had just begun. Light could not fill empty bellies, but another windmill could soak the dry ground, creating food where once there was none. Magetsi mpepo, electric wind, can feed my country, William thought. And that was the strongest magic of all. Eventually, William used his windmill to charge a car battery, allowing him to power four light bulbs in his parents' house. But his dream of pumping water wasn't achieved until several years later when he built his green machine, which pulled water from a small well near his home and fed his mother's garden, allowing her to grow vegetables year-round. In 2007, William was discovered by some journalists and invited him to speak at the TED conference in Tanzania. He'd never been in an airplane or even seen the internet. Many people were moved by his story and donated money to help send him back to school and eventually install a solar-powered water pump that irrigated his father's fields, forever protecting them from hunger. William is now a student at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire, an Ivy League top-tier school. He is studying to be an engineer and plans to return to Malawi to work on renewable energy for electricity and pumping water in villages. Pause the video and grab a pen and paper to discuss and write your answers to the following questions. What was your favorite part of this book? Why is William Kumquamba's story so important? What did he accomplish and what steps did he take from the beginning to the end of the story to make his dreams a reality? What challenges, obstacles, or difficulties did he overcome to achieve his dreams and to make the world a better place? What can you learn from him? What are your goals and dreams? What can you do to make the world a better place in big ways and small everyday ways? What challenges might you need to overcome and how can you overcome them with the help of others or with the help of your own determination and hard work? What causes are you passionate about and how can you use your unique gifts, talents, and interests to do what you genuinely love to do in order to help solve a world problem and make the world better. Write or draw what you learned about William Kumquamba and also write or draw your goal for how you want to change the world for the better. Set a goal and then list action steps of how to achieve that goal. You can visit laurenmartinbooks.com for a free printable service project planner to plan how you will change the world. You can also find printable and play-based preschool curriculum and K-12 curriculum on laurenmartinbooks.com. Please like, share, and subscribe to Lauren Martin Books for more read-along stories with comprehension questions, drawing and writing activities, and empowering, inspiring projects. Thank you for reading with me.